Hey, Locati here. We're doing an update on our Healing Hands Paladin build. Uh, we're going to talk about a few different aspects of the build. We're going to do a showcase at 1000 Corruption. We're going to talk about scaling it from starting Empowered to 400 Corruption to 850 Corruption and, and kind of where you need to be. And we'll start off with like basics. This is the Seraph's Blade version of the Healing Hands Paladin. So we are primarily using Seraph's Blade to deliver damage and ward through Healing Hands. To use Seraph's Blade, you need four things. You need about 70% cast speed. Uh, you can get like 30% from the passive tree uh, for your Blade Master node right here. The rest you can get from your relic, your dagger, your gloves. You can use a brass amulet for the cast speed uh, implicit on amulets. Um, but you need about 70% cast speed to get started so that it feels good. You need about 80% critical strike chance. And it needs to be melee critical strike chance at least 80% here. This is primarily going to come from a dagger with 4% base crit strike chance and then somewhere between five and ten percent melee crit strike chance depending on how high of a roll or what tier you can get on there and a peak of the mountain so that you have the increased critical strike chance there just these two items are more than sufficient to get you to 80 percent um, if you need a little bit of help you can use copper rings to give you that little bit of extra increased critical strike chance that you might need as well and then you're going to need about 700% healing effectiveness. And the majority of this healing effectiveness is going to come from jewelry. I've got some on my ring. I've got some on my amulet. Um, you can get some on your relic. And then we also have healing effectiveness coming from your, if I can get it up here, our passive tree. We've got healing effectiveness notes here, here. You've got one here that you can take if you're a little bit low in your earlier in your skill points. And so you need about 700 ish percent healing effectiveness and you're going to want close to 2k armor just so that you have a good base of damage reduction from your armor once you've got that you're good to just start running with the build and pushing corruption now these numbers will work up until about 400 corruption once you get to 400 corruption you're going to start to need some additional damage you're going to get that by equipping a Siphon of Anguish and a Shattered Chains. This is Siphon of Anguish is going to apply Doom, and so you want a good roll on your chance to apply Doom. And then Shattered Chains is going to make Doom give you more melee damage as a result of that. And then obviously Shattered Chains itself has increased melee damage and a little bit of melee void damage as well. So this is a really strong little combo for increasing your damage. Now your armor may dip a little bit if you were using a high armor belt, but the Shattered Chains does have an increased armor statistic, so that should offset most of that. Now, as you're pushing up into 850 corruption, we're going to have to start layering defenses. You have a few options here. You can scale your armor, you can scale your dodge, you can use a shield, or you can get ward retention. Now, I chose Ward Retention for the build because I think it is a better overall choice for pushing higher corruption. So we went with Frostbite Shackles to gain 1% Ward Retention for 1% uncapped Cold Resistance. And then we have Cold Resistance up to 366% chance because we have Cold Rest here. We have Elemental Rest here. We have Cold Rest here. We have Cold Rest here. Um, we have Elemental Rest here. And so on and so forth. And so... Frostbite Shackles give you a nice scaling of ward retention here to get your defensive layers up higher for your ward generation with the enemy hands. Now, if you use Frostbite Shackles, you only have a couple of choices. You can slam ward per second on Frostbite Shackles, or you can run Last Steps of the Living to get ward per second, which is required to trigger the ward from the enemy hands. I chose to put cast speed on my Frostbite Shackles and run a ward per second on my boots with last steps of the living. You can instead put ward per second on your Frostbite Shackles and run Solaron steps or any other boot that is going to be a good fit for your 
build instead of running the last steps of the living. This is just the way we decided to go. You can you can mix and match these pieces of gear however you want, so long as you have a source of ward per second to miss some health, and you have frostbite shackles for ward retention. Now we're going to go ahead and showcase a 1004 corruption um, uh, echo right here. And so we'll head over here. And of course, the end of the entire one is right here. So this is a boring. But as you can see, at a thousand corruption, we still cleave through everything. There's no problems. Everything dies. Most things die in one hit. High health targets will die in a few hits. You have ward generating anywhere from 30 to 65k, depending on how long you can attack and whether or not you have your increased cast speed active from using volatile reversal. And so it's still just very, very easy build to get through all of the content that you need to get it through. There is nothing really complicated here. It is smooth, quick. Lunge is a phenomenal traversal skill, and so we continue using that. It's very, very nice. Now, a lot of people have expressed concerns about, oh, I don't have frostbite shackles that work, or oh, I don't have a peak of the mountain that I can put healing hands on. We're going to take our peak of the mountain off, and now we're just running with no helmet. And as you can see, with no helmet at all, we can still easily go in and clear this. Things take a little bit longer to kill because we don't have the critical strike chance. We're only at 46% crit strike chance. We don't have three points in healing hands right now, so we're missing a lot of uh, scaling from healing hands that we could have. But at a thousand corruption, it doesn't matter. We can still go through all of this and clear the content perfectly fine. It just takes a little bit longer if we don't have the right gear. Now, if you don't have frostbite shackles and you don't have this ward retention, that doesn't really matter. You can still clear the content. You still have tons of ward generation. You just have to be more careful. If you get surrounded by a tremendous amount of enemies, you'll have to use uh, defenses to live through that. You'll have to dodge some attacks maybe that they throw out. But you don't have to have the ward retention. It's still a perfectly viable build without all of these like in-game goals and, and scaling things to make the content easier for you. So don't feel like you have to have the perfect gear to play the, gear, the build. Just make sure that you have your basics down, which is cast speed, crit damage, healing effectiveness, and armor. Those are the things that you need to get it going. Um, once you have those things, you can start scaling it by replacing things with crit multi so that you can have more crit multi. We've got 353% crit multi on this build. It makes a big difference in how fast we can kill things and how fast we can fail content. But again, it's not a requirement at all. So don't stress out about that kind of stuff. Just use the gear that you have access to and then set your goals on what you want to get and kind of progress little by little on it. You'll be very happy with it. I think as everything sits right now, this build can push probably 2,000 corruption without needing any major changes in gear. And then to get three, 4,000 corruption, we would have to add another layer of defense. And so that's where we would look at really getting these like percentage dodge fixes mixed in and move a point from our attack speed down here over to our dodge rate here. And we scale dodge as an additional layer of defense. We could lose the eye of green and use a bulwark of the abyss here for a shield layer of defense. We have a lot of options on ways that we can layer our defenses. Now we'll talk about my selection for body armor right here because it's very unusual to most people. Um, we're not using multi-strike. Plus four multi-strike is a weird choice, except for the fact that it's 138% increased melee damage. Most of our scaling comes from base damage, crit, crit multi, and fire fin. We have very little increased damage. So increased damage is very, very big for us. And so this chest piece plays a huge role in the amount of damage the character is doing. Um, I would highly recommend that you get a, a multi-strike or a rive or a lunging strike or a warpath or anything. You can put a tomb in on your chest if you want to, and you can put strength on there for armor if you just want more armor. But this increased melee damage is a really, really nice multiplicative scaling for us because we don't have 
that much increased damage. We have a little bit of increased fire damage and we have a little bit of increased melee damage. And so these multipliers make a huge difference in the scaling of our build. Now, as always, if you have any questions, put a comment down on YouTube, come over to Twitch. All of these builds are made live on Twitch. They're builds that are made in play, changes are made while we're playing, and so things are constantly adjusting. If, if you're working on getting the build put together and something doesn't feel right, doesn't look right, just come by Twitch and ask me. I've had half a dozen people over the past couple of days where we put this build together just come in and ask for some help fixing their build, and it made a huge difference in how much fun they were having with it and how successful they were having with it. And, uh, and I know you've heard it a thousand times, like, follow, subscribe. These are super critical activities. Um, they're what allow creators to continue creating. So if you get a chance, subscribe on YouTube, come over to Twitch, like me on Twitch, say hi. We really appreciate it. And thank you very much for your time. Y'all have a wonderful day.